Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Good evening, folks, and welcome to Alien Addict. We have Rich from Goof on Radio in the house. Rich, thank you for joining us on this final luxurious evening. Well, it's daytime here, but I always say evening. How are you today? Fantastic. I mean, I literally just woke up and uh, the sun's not up yet. So uh, very good. And thanks for having me. Anytime. It's been a long time, man. I We have been meaning to do this now for... A year. It seems like a year. Yeah, it seems like it. <laughs> but a long time. Um, but, um, Rich, I'm going to let you take most of this sh- this show up because this, I, I, wa- I want your story. You've been 16 years in ufology and you've been through an absolute roller coaster. The story is amazing. We spoke about it briefly. Um But I've said save most of it because I want to hear it on camera. And I'm sure a lot of viewers are interested to know this story. This story is fantastic. Um, But before we kind of get into that, tell us a little bit about Goof on Radio. What's it about? No, not going to tell you. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) All right. All right. That's probably the only time I'll joke. Uh, Goof on Radio is Goof on Radio Stream on YouTube, which is on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific in the States. I have no, I think it's seven hours uh, ahead for you, so whatever, do the math. What was that, two? Two o'clock. Two o'clock, yeah. And you're, uh, yeah, and, it, and it's, a, it's a show that has morphed from many different uh, shows and throughout the years, and uh, I mean... <laughs> A little inside joke. I just don't like it when people say, I mean, and they didn't say anything. Uh, like, no. They'll ask you a question and say, the, what's the weather like? I mean, it's hot and it's cold. You know, why do you say I mean? Anyway, that's why I said that. I know we're getting off to a weird start, but I am weird. And, and this is show, be a weird show. Probably. I, I told you before I wanted to do something a little different try to give something different or talk about things but it's kind of hard i've talked Just about so many things over the years i constantly talk about it on the show that's what the show circles around my experiences things that i've figured out along the way through trial and error or other people's mistakes and um i don't know why people just don't come aboard immediately it's it's the only way to go how would you not want to know about the truth? I get yelled at for telling the truth. You don't know nothing. Of course, that's not a balloon, but you can see the string. So that's a tale from the lizard people. I'm like, people oh my get, God. People get so defensive with anything to do. If they think they're right or they think they've found the best evidence yet, and then you say, it's just a mountain, it's just a rock, it's just a balloon, they start crying. You know, because they've in their reality, they have found this hard, hard hitting evidence. That, and that you're not going to change their mind. Instead of them saying, why do you say that? Show me. They just yell, say, no, 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 it's definitely this. You know, ask, ask me why. Why do you think it's that? I'd like to learn without saying I like to learn, but you think they would want to know. And that's the thing. They know what it is. I think most of these people know it's an airplane, a balloon, a bird, whatever. They just want that fame too. So so I think from what we've already gathered and what the viewers are gathering from yourself is that you don't like the BS in ufology. But what I want to know is before you go into your story, what, if we go back past 16 years, what actually got you into this subject? Well, when I was five, uh, me and my dad were putting out the trash and one of the neighbors was looking up. So my dad instinctively looked up and saw a red dot in the sky. And my father said uh, to the neighbor, "What, what are you looking at? Oh, that red dot. And so he started looking up at it. I saw it, and there was a blackout that night in New York. The whole East Coast, I think it was 77, had a major blackout, one of the largest in history. 
So that got me into it real early. I was interested because I wanted to know what these lights were doing. It's not normal in my five years on Earth. I know you think, wow, that's awfully young. But you know what? Uh, things stick with people for different reasons, and that stuck with me, and I don't know why. I don't know why. But my whole life I've always been into um, watching well, how old would I have been? Not not five when that happened. If that was in 77, I just thought of that. God, I was nine. No wonder why I remember. Do you know, I, see, this is a perfect example of what I do on the show. I talk about how the wit people aren't good witnesses. They're the worst. And this happened to me, and I made that huge mistake. Um, God, because I remember that year, Close Encounters of the Third Kind came out. That's why I know exactly what year it was. And I, I don't know why I said five, but it's interesting. And that's why I always uh, tell everybody, do your own research. I don't know what that means, Ollie. What does that mean? <laughs> do your own research. <laughs> I said. So, but, but no, but as time went on, um, TV shows like Battlestar Galactica, Space 1999, uh, those were real popular and kept me interested in this weird, you know, world of where there could be aliens out there, you know, running around, or it's us from so, the future. So you, so from an early age, nine years old, you were really interested in the, su the subject, but something happened 16 years ago that made you decide to actually do something about it. What was, what was that? Well, actually, it was uh, June of 2003. I uh, borrowed my sister's camera for the monsoon season because mine had broken. And it was the same exact camera I had. And uh, I'm videotaping something, and I don't know what it is. Uh, I think I showed you the video where this light is above a tree. Yeah. And it looks like it shined down and actually shined in my face and the power went out um, and it came over the house twice and I caught it on video and it and you could even hear the uh, the uh, I don't know if it's electromagnetic wave or whatever it is, but you could hear like energy, you know, when it was there. Very odd. Um, so. That a year later, I had bought another camera and uh, started uh, videotaping the storms and saw a really interesting light. Uh, that's when I started recording things, but the actual date was April 14th, 2004. Me and my wife were outside where I just got a dog and uh, we were outside looking up and saw three lights. One went one way, one went another way. She saw it first, and then I saw it after she pointed it out. I said, no, nah, I don't know what that is. Probably satellites. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, that's impossible. Satellites don't stop and then reverse and go out. And the next night, I went out and uh, saw the same thing. I went inside. It was exact same time, just after 10 o'clock. And then I went inside and started doing research, seeing if anybody saw anything. Because I was thinking, oh, the Phoenix Lights from 1997, maybe they're back. So I looked up UFOs over Phoenix, and I saw Jeff Willis and his website. So I looked into that, got in contact with him. He told me I need to record things during the day. So... The rest is history. That's that's when I first started recording. It was June 27th was the very first time. And I caught a triangle at night. Pretty you cool. Caught, what, like a TR3B? No, oh, God, no. Just three points of light. Right. Three, I don't know why I'm nervous talking on this show, talking on your podcast. I, I'm nervous interviewing you. It's, I think it's because we're both in the field, and it's it is strange when we – kind of when we speak to each other in person it's completely different to because i think you're nervous because i want your story and you're nervous because how people may see this story you know but this is why i'm intrigued with this story because 
the roller coaster you've been on, the ups, the downs, a lot of downs, and that's that to me, for you to get back up and keep fighting, I couldn't do it. And well, uh, uh, and people need to hear this story. It's a long story, though. <laughs> We've got time. I um so uh later on in that year I was capturing things I I guess you were kind of curious on what I captured or whatnot but anyway I got into it and I started uh realizing that a lot of people aren't verifying anybody's UFO footage like I would send some things over to which is now defunct but hbccufo.org and uh, that was Brian Vike's um, very, very popular UFO website from Canada, British Columbia. And he um, kept telling me, man, Booger, it is good stuff, Booger. Yeah, you know, I don't know what that means, but he kept calling me Booger or Bugger or something. <laughs> he goes, uh, and then he would call the UFOs Buggers. Look at that Bugger there. Um, but he uh, was just making me feel like everything I'm sending him is a real UFO. You know, and I, okay, that's weird the way I said that. It is unidentified, but he's not asking me anything about it. He just says, oh, that looks great there, Richard. Yeah, we can put that on the, on the homepage of the website. And I'm like, great, okay. Well, he didn't even ask me anything about it, though. And then I, I uh, started sending them to another website, which is still around. I'm not going to mention their name. Uh, cause I don't like them anymore, but, um, he never asked me anything either. And I found that in this field, if it looks good, it is good. And people can get views on their websites for it, which brings traffic, which brings them to their store where they can buy videos and clothes and all sorts of good stuff. That's what bothers me. I don't care. Anybody makes money. It's just off of unverified or hoax items, <laughs> items. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so you're saying that some of this, you started to have this realization because you were sending the every bit of footage you had to, to this person. And they, they said, oh, that's great. Even though you yourself was questioning some of your own work. Well, I was questioning. I know what I saw. Come to find out a lot of it was bull. You know, just like, uh, yeah, man, um, I was figuring out that the field isn't what it should be. Like nobody's being vetted hardly, you know, even for interviews. People would uh, ask me to do an interview without wanting to know how my name's even, you know, out there. You know, oh, well, we saw you on YouTube or, or you know, we heard your show. Just want you to come on a and then I'd ask them questions about what show, and of course they lied. They had no, oh, I don't know, you had so many of them. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> this is going to go great. But that's the field we're in. Um, now, people may think, God, this guy's negative, everything he's saying is negative, and it's, it's not, it's truthful. There's a difference. Well, you sound so mad. Well, because at this point, I have a lot invested, you know, seen some things that I can't explain and uh, have to rely on myself. I you can't trust anybody, even the people who analyze the stuff. You know, uh, I don't want to name any names again, but um, people you've seen them on TV analyzing data, and they lie, blatantly lie. It's embarrassing. Uh, I think, and um, this is the re the reality of ufology. It's a business. It is turned into kind of a ruthless business. And there is there's little there's little channels like yourself, myself that will try and vet it. I mean, you, you you've been nicknamed the sheriff of UFO, ufology, you know, because you won't stand for any of the shit that's out there. Pardon my French, but this is uh, alien addict. Say what you want. Um, you know, there's it's needed. When when I first saw your channel and you said you made a joke and said I'm going to sheriff ufology, you know I thought this guy is 
you seemed pissed. You seemed so pissed off. But at the same time, you had a laugh with it. And you do have a laugh with it. But you... It's not wanted. You don't want the hoaxes anymore. You know, you've said it yourself, we're never going to get disclosure. And we'll never get disclosure at any point while the, the BS remains. Even after, it'll still be there, um, unfortunately. Uh, I just, um, I know what I captured. So when um, other people are posting fake stuff, my stuff gets lumped in with it. And I don't like it. I know what I've captured. Now, uh, to the to the trained eye, you can tell the difference between uh, CGI and uh, what's real. Uh, so you get that with my videos. You'll be able to tell instantly this is a genuine video. This is a real UFO. Now, do I think I every one of my videos that I consider, there's probably about eight of them, that I think that nobody can debunk, you know, nobody can figure out. So far, nobody can. But that's where, that's why I'm so angry. That's why I'm so passionate about the field. I feel that my stuff is, and it's not just about me. I'm just saying people like me who have legitimate stuff, we're being called hoaxers or liars, and we're not. So you're never going to know. Nobody's going to know the truth on the internet. So you went out in the field, you used to do, was it Was it just about every day or every other day? Every day. Every there day. was no day off in three and a half years. And, yeah. and you, at what point did you decide to get your own website and put this on the website? Well, I went on a, a couple of shows and saw the website from the, the radio show or podcast and also saw other websites like HBCC UFO. I started that uh, in early 2005 was the official launch date. And the reason I did, because I wanted my way of thinking on a specific, I don't want it mixed in with somebody else's opinions or hoax videos around it, you know, while I'm talking or <clears throat> showcasing my videos. I wanted a website for my stuff, to teach people how I made the mistakes through trial and error, I made more mistakes than, than anybody I know. And that's the only way you learn. But you got to have a nice way of thinking, too, called critical thinking. And if you don't have that ability to think critically, you're, you're just going to be a, a person who sees everything as UFOs. And that's the problem. Oh, my goodness. We're yeah. being attacked by Bigfoot Cat. Yeah, I'm just going to have to give it, put him on my knee. He's after attention. You know. Well, the website also, uh, I you know, like I said, I showed people how to debunk stuff, and but it was also promoting uh, simultaneously the radio show that I started to talk about it and explain everything and point out all the things right and wrong with ufology. How can we make it better? If you listen to my first show, or you listen to the show I did the other night, they're almost identical. It's, I mean, not in the topic, but it, nothing's changed that much, you know? So anyway, the website had to be made. It got very popular and it got so popular, you know, I was, people were finding me going on documentaries or uh, being on TV, even in Japan. The uh, website you can see was called cnufos.com not an acronym for anything just cnufos like it would be a license plate I like, you know, it. like I have on my back wall over here <laughs> um, oh yeah it's all blurred out um, yeah so the website um, grew we were I, I say we but it was just me almost a, a million visitors a month and I was put in a documentary called Fast Walkers because I was talking to the guy who made the film and I was telling him, um, oh yeah, it was, uh, we, were, we were sending each other mail, like evidence, like video. And it, I told him, I sent you five DVDs. Didn't you get them? I haven't heard from you. And he's like, I never got anything from you. I go, okay, let me send another. Sent him another five. 
never got him. So he says, but we had noticed that China, I don't remember, China Federation, no, wait, China something, um, the Russian Federation and other countries were going on my website. You can see all their IP addresses and they were in sequence. And I don't know if that means they were going office to office, passing along my information, but we noticed that these countries were looking into my stuff. And it, will, it was every single day you would see all hundreds of IP addresses that were from the Russian Federation government. Oh. It was from the government. Yeah. So weird things started happening. Um, somebody tried to break into my house, right into the room where I kept all my evidence. Um, I was definitely followed by a, there's a video out there called the spy guy. I had a couple I on think I've a seen nearby. That. Yeah. I mean, this stuff happened to me and I don't know why I didn't, uh, unless I captured something amazing on video, which I did and they were trying to get it. My thing is just ask, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, just yeah. ask, we're from the government. We're interested in your videos. See, th then it makes me think, well, maybe it was a crazy fan, somebody trying to scare me or something. This field is unbelievable. The things that happen. And it's hard to believe it. If it didn't happen to me, I wouldn't believe it. So how long was the website uh, around for? Just a couple of years. Two years, I think. Two and a half. And it, and it grew very fast. It grew overnight. Like around the ninth month, I went from 30,000 people to half a million. Wow. And I and I, I mean, we were just me and my friends that I'm like, what's going on? They're like, we don't know. Somebody is either promoting the hell out of your stuff or it's gone viral. And this was just for fun. There was no. You, you, did you sell anything on the website? No, nah, never sold anything. So never. So, yeah. so the website cost you money, but you didn't get anything out of it. Yeah, it wasn't expensive, you know, but, you know, I had to pay for camera, camera stuff, you know, add ons and uh, lots of lots of lots of video tape, <laughs> blind tapes. Um, I've got over 500 of them. It's a lot. I, I, and I've seen that you have um, and just briefly before we carry on with this, you you are going to start releasing some of these videos again yes i am as a matter of fact i may be releasing some today um what i want to do is show how everything started from day one and it's going to be just like a little weekly thing um you know teach people what i went through i think it's important they know uh, a lot of people think uh, i because of my style the way i talk that I don't know if they're not taking me seriously, but they say that I'm useless and meaningless, but I want to prove to them no. And not to them. I just want the information out there. Yeah. That was probably a 40 and slip too. But it's true. I do want to prove it to everybody that I'm not just saying this stuff just because I want to. I want to hear myself talk. This stuff actually happened. And a lot of weird stuff has happened since that I would never believe in either. So the um, website was up for two years. What happened to the website? The website, uh, I still have it on a laptop. Um, went to go log in one day and it wouldn't work. Tried to log in again, wouldn't work. Then I opened up an email and I don't know whose it was. I don't remember. And everything froze. So I restarted the computer, turned it on, tried to log back into the site, wouldn't work, did the same exact routine. I pretty much do the same thing now, but just a little differently, YouTube and then the emails. So opened it up, was about to uh, read an article from somewhere, some story off a website, and it started freezing up again. It actually started at the bottom right and it was like a wave. It was like a lunar wave. It just went right over the computer, never seen anything like it. 
and hasn't worked since. Took it into um, the guys over at Best Buy. They put it on their diagnostic, I guess. I get a call an hour later saying, um, yeah, is this Rich? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we tried fixing your computer, but we couldn't. Uh, do you want to come get it? I said, what do you mean you couldn't? He goes, well, come on in. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to you about it. So I was right around the corner, came in, and he goes, I'm giving you a full refund. I'm giving you this, this, and he shakes it, you know, like right in front of me. I'm giving you this. And he puts it on the counter and uh, he goes, I can't charge you for it ruining our diagnostics machine. I said, what do you mean? He goes, your computer has a virus. And that virus gave our machine a virus. And he says, never seen it before in the two years I've been working here. So I said, well, what, do you, what am I supposed to do? He goes, he goes, you're going to have to get some sort of expert to look into this because we can't even do a diagnostic. It broke our machine. I'm so like, your computer yeah. broke their computer. Yeah, that, according to him. Yeah, yeah. But it gets better. Hold on, I need a drink. So I get my money. I get my computer. Staples right around the corner. Because I have to get this done right away. I don't want my website to be down. I don't. Well, at the time, it wasn't that I know of. Because I went online when I was at Best Buy to see if it was still active since I couldn't run into it. I just wanted to see why I couldn't log in. So what I did, I just thought maybe something was going on. But the website was still up. Um, I go over to Staples. I didn't want to tell them I was just at Best Buy, but I didn't take the sticker off the bottom of it. And he goes, were you just at Best Buy? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. And he goes, what happened? I, he said that I didn't tell him it broke their machine or he said that. I said, he can't fix it. So he gave me my money back. He goes, okay. He goes, I'll get it done. I'm, he goes, I'm the best at figuring stuff out. About an hour goes by. Uh, he calls me and he goes, um, yeah, I can't fix it. Do you think I can keep it? I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, I want to take it home with me and work on it. There's some I've never seen anything like it. I said, OK. And he goes, also, I'm going to have to use my diagnostic machine that I have at home because I can't do it here. It won't work. He didn't say it broke it. He just said it wouldn't work. I said, yeah, man, sure. How long do you think it'll be? And he goes, I'll try to have it done by Wednesday, which would have been two days. I said, all right. Didn't hear from him on Tuesday. Didn't hear from him on Wednesday. So I called him real late in the day. Uh, he gave me a cell phone number in case he was at home. And he goes, I don't know, man. He goes, I've got my friend who's going to come over. He's, believe it or not, he's probably better than me. So he's going to come over and we're going to try, we're going to get this fixed. <laughs> Nobody could fix it. I still had the computer, had one of my mom and dad's friends look at it. He's supposedly an expert. He couldn't fig figure it out. The website's still in there, but uh, what happened was I couldn't update the site. All the passwords and everything were on the computer. I never wrote them down because I'm mental. I said, well, what could go wrong? You know, everything will just be on the computer. So I tried calling the guy who made the website for me. He, he moved, uh, but he never got back to me. And because of that, the website never got updated. I let the, uh, the account run dry, and that was the end of seeing UFOs. Wow. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know what happened. Um, nobody does. But I've, I've never had, uh, I brought many computers in since then, you know, but uh, yeah, very strange story. I suppose as well, back then we were as password savvy. We kind of like just trusted that things would just work and, you know, so. Yeah, exactly. Is, is there any lost videos on there that you don't have backed up? I don't know. So no. Probably no, not. No, no, I have I have all my stuff because I have the originals. It's just um, the site you lost. 
Yeah, but if people want to view it, you can still see it and probably 80% of the stuff on it if you just go to waybackmachine.com and type in the website and you'll see it there. And you can see what the site looked like. You can read the articles. There was so much content. I updated it every day and night, twice a day, with just videos. It was an unbelievable web. It was getting almost a million people visiting it. That's just wild. So, so this is what kind of got you noticed and out there, the web, the website, the fact that you're going out yeah. in the field doing it, doing it right. Because I know you've met quite a lot of people in the field, um, Travis Walton being one of them, Hani yeah. Hassan. Yeah. Um, so what, ha- what, what, what did you do after the website? You knew that you could not retrieve this. You, 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 you gave up on that. Was there a point where you thought, I'm not going to go back into ufology or did you just start doing something else? No, no, that, that was, um, an easy fix because a few days after going through this or five days, uh, I opened up another website under, uh, the Ning, uh, the Ning platform. So seeing UFOs came back. It was just seeing ufos.ning.com instead of seeing ufos.com. But it wasn't the same website, of course. Uh, people, uh, you know, um, can join. Uh, it's the same thing I have now, the Goofon Network. You could join there, make your own page for free. It's like your own website under the umbrella of my website. Um, so that's what I did. I started uploading uh, everything I could from seeing UFOs to this Ning website. And it started growing. We had over a, a thousand like people sign up. Well, we had over a thousand people sign up in just six months, which is unbelievable. So it was fun. Yeah, no, that I mean, kept it going. So I kept. Oh, I was gonna say I kept video videotaping things. Um, the Phoenix Lights uh, event every year kept me relevant. Um, yeah, it was just still seeing stuff in the sky. That that was all the way through 2006. And then everything seemed to have died down in Phoenix. Do they still do these events now for the Phoenix Lights? Yeah, every year around March 13th, Dr. Lynn Kitai, she's the one who made the documentary at Harkins Theater in Scottsdale, does a uh, one or two show event with a, uh, you know, question and answer. So did you used to get invited to that quite often? Yeah, I have a uh, unlimited invite, so I can go every year for free. Ah, fantastic. Yeah. So is that where you met kind of uh, a lot of the people in ufology that you've met? Uh, I mean, how did you start branching out after the, the website? What made you go further? Well, uh, well, people were still contacting me, actually. So I was still doing other radio shows and... Um, you know, just making the rounds. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that question. I don't think. Sorry, uh, what I'm saying is, um, so you, so when did you? Because you didn't you have a YouTube channel before? Yes, I had UFO Chronicles of Rich G, uh, which was amazing. We had over 10,000 subscribers, um, but this was a couple of years ago. Uh, I got shut down when you remember when I had the Alex Jones thing happened <clears throat> and they took him down. Well, this was around that time. I know it was before, but I think YouTube had changed their analytics and were getting rid of a lot of controversial websites or uh, YouTube channels. And mine had so much stuff from YouTube on it, along with all my videos, you know, 20, 30 second clips, the long versions of them unedited. Um, you know, some of my sightings were, uh, the fleet sighting was a 22 minute sighting. So, uh, you know, all that stuff was on that YouTube channel because it was my UFO Chronicles. It was everything. And not only that, you didn't need YouTube. <laughs> you could have just gone to that channel and type in anything you wanted to find. It was there. The moon, you know, everything, Mars, 
I, anything UFO, I found it. That that was my life. That's what I did. That was full time for me um, in these first, you know, three to six years. Was this, I didn't. Have, hmm? Was this very similar to the the style that you do on Goof on now, or was would you say it was completely different? The only thing different. Well, on YouTube now, I don't take other YouTube videos and um, showcase them on my channel like I used to. I have different categories, you know, you can have all your different playlists. Um, yeah, I didn't have it. Uh, this one is strictly about the show, the one I have now. Yeah, so did you get any... When this show shut down, did you? What was the reasons behind it? Did YouTube give a reason? Nope. Well, yeah, yes and no. They had uh, after doing some research, I found out that they got rid of my channel because they said I was abusive in chat rooms or in the comment section, like I was harassing people. And I'm going to tell you right now. Never happened. I never, ever, ever back then, even now, <clears throat> I don't call anybody names. But back then, I tried being as professional as you could possibly be, just so I wouldn't lose the channel. And um, they lied. I didn't get any strikes. I didn't get anything. I couldn't even get a, in contact with anybody from YouTube to respond. They didn't even respond to me. Yeah, that's very upset. It seemed almost impossible to get them to uh, to respond to um, anything less than a hundred thousand uh, per channel. Um, I mean, I, I I said I mean, uh, it's true. I tried like mad. I wanted my channel back, but um, they got rid of it, and that was um, very hard for me. That was probably one of the hardest. That that was just as hard as losing that YouTube channel as it was my website. Because there was so much stuff on it. It was, it was a great channel. This is what I, what I admire about you. And it, I don't know if I could do that. I mean, you know about the two copyright strikes that I got, um, which I've managed to get one turned round. But right. if I lost the channel, I mean, I have a backup channel. I, I honestly don't know how I could pick myself up and just go, right, let's start again. It, it's... It must have been difficult. I mean, I, I can't imagine just saying, right, yep, let's start from de zero subscribers. Let's start from a few views and build it back up. I mean, you've just hit a thousand subscribers again. Uh, well, <laughs> well, so you've, you've got one percent of what you had. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. How long did it take you after losing that channel to to deciding to do Goof on Radio? Oh, I don't know if I hold on. How long was it? Um, give me a second because I don't think it was immediate. Because I think what I what I at that time I was coming back into ufology because I took a year off. And when I heard that Jaime Mosan, whatever year that was. When Jaime Mosan became the UFO researcher of the year, or was it Tom? De I think it was Tom DeLong. That's I'll what just, it was. Yeah. Was that a couple of years ago? Two years ago? Yeah, no, three years ago or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, two and a half, three years ago. Um, that's when I started. So it was probably about a, almost maybe a year from the UFO Chronicles of Rich G to this channel. Well, this channel I had when I was, uh, it, it was under a different name. I think, it, can you change the name? I think you can, yes. right? Yes, you can. Yes. Because I'm not sure if I made a new channel, but I, I don't think I did. This channel um, sat around for a long time before I started doing any live shows. I was on Spreaker and started back with the Rich Giordano show, um, did that, and then I was uploading them to this page, which was, I believe, the Paranormal Code. Yeah, that's right. It was the Paranormal Code. And I changed it to Goof on Radio Stream. 
when I um, decided to, to leave Spreaker and do a live show. So on Spreaker, I mean, from Spreaker, do a live show on YouTube. I mean, you're doing a hell of a lot in the community now for ufology. I mean, I, I see it that way. I mean, you, you're trying to fight away the, the BS. You're also doing your own stream. Uh, you're on Spaced Out Radio every Saturday night. Um, I don't know. Uh, your last video, you said that you might be leaving Spaced Out Radio. Yes, I am doing my last Spaced Out Radio show Saturday night, but I'm doing an interview with Michael Schratt, so it should be unbelievable. I think it's his first video and uh, first uh, show in a very long time. So I think it's going to be uh, unbelievable. Yeah, and then what's going to happen is Goof on Radio stream will be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and probably Saturday night once or twice a month out on the town doing the live stream. Yeah, because you went out on uh, Facebook the other night and watched. I was actually having a bath at the time when I was watching you. Uh, you was um, going to see the cryptic, um, what was it, in that park? Yeah, in Arizona on TikTok, there was a, a couple a viral, that. Was huh? It, it was a viral, semi-viral video that went on TikTok and you went to investigate it. It was with some sort of ape, was it? Or something like something with big arms? Yeah, so, yeah, like supposedly uh, some cryptic. Yeah, it was like a monkey. Yeah, like a huge monkey or something. And they walked up to the tool shed there, and uh, it growled. It was behind, you know, the 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 enclosed. It, what is it? A gate? Did they have a gate? Yeah, it was a gate. Yeah, and knocked. then they had doors. And when they walked up to it, you know, they were you know turning the handle and the thing. So they said, this is where it's locked in. They keep it locked up in here or something like that. So I said, well, maybe it's in this shed. So I cautiously walked up to it and nothing happened. I was beaten up on that door. Well, this is what I thought. I thought this is it. As soon as, as, soon as Rich gets a thousand subscribers and you're going to start going out in the field, it, it could get dangerous because, I mean, not to mention, forget the aliens and that, but you were walking around in pitch black in, in a park, you know? <laughs> what if somebody would try to mug you? I mean, does that ever cross your mind? Of course. Bring it on. Yeah, well, you <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, uh, I don't know, man. I'm not going to tell anybody where I'm going, but... If, well, I mean, I'll give a general sense of where I'm at, you know, but I, I don't think anybody would rush down there uh, to try to get me or mug me. Even if there was just somebody just casually walking by not knowing what I was doing, I'm not too worried about it. Do you think it feels less nerve wracking when you do something like that? Because I kind of put myself into that situation uh, that the fact that you've got, you know, maybe 100 people at a time watching so you're kind of not on your own at the same time. Same time you are very much on your own, but you've got people watching you. No, I don't feel that way. I still feel like I'm alone for some, maybe because I'm used to doing this with YouTube now that it's just part of my normal everyday life. Yeah, but I'm trying to remember if I ever felt that way. No, I when I did my brother-in-law's ghost hunt at my sister's house, and I walked into that house, I didn't even realize there were people watching. Even though I was still narrating, I was talking to myself. It's something I would naturally think, but I was just speaking it. So yeah, I still felt like I was alone. It doesn't help. I was still a little bit a little bit nervous. Uh, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more um, investigations, especially ones that are live and out in the field, because I don't think there's enough people. I don't think any, I can't think of anybody that's doing that live, that's going out, that's actually looking for evidence. And th there's no way of kind of faking it. You know, you, you, you're, you're there, you're, you're, you're out in the, the pitch. But you said in that video, there's nothing here. 
There's nothing here whatsoever. And I think the conclusion you had is that video had been faked. Big time. Big time. There was no evidence anywhere. There was no Bigfoot print. You know, if, if there was something like that locked inside of that uh, tool shed, there would have been maybe hair fibers somewhere or maybe it would have smelled. You know, I, I don't know. I was I was a couple of days late from when the video was uh, originally posted on the night they went there or whatever. Um, but there was no evidence anywhere. You know, it was it was quiet. This is the problem, though. I mean, this is the this is the problem that we have that a cat is trying to uh, sabotage the, the interview. Uh, the, the, the the problem is that there is always somebody out there that because of all these platforms that we use, that they think, you know what, I'm going to make a video and fool people and see if I can make it go viral. And there's no way of putting a stop to that. I know. You know, it's sad. If I was younger, like if I was a 15-year-old kid and tr and you can get popular by faking something very easily, I would try it if I was a kid and didn't care about ufology. You know, you got nothing to do one night, you toss back a few, and you're like, let's do it. Uh, you know, you've been talking about it, talking about it. Of course, let's try it and see what happens when we wake up tomorrow. So that's you blame it on the kids. The youth, yeah. The youth of today is destroying ufology. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> because because it wouldn't be anybody else. Actually, I mean, that's not true at all. Actually, there's a lot of people my age, 38, that are uh, <laughs> that are out there doing this. I would have this. said 28. Oh, well. I would have too, but then, you know, I don't want to say anything um, about myself. Yeah, man, I think it's a mixture, but I think it's a lot of uh, young people, you know, under 30 in their 20s, somewhere in there, you know. I don't think it's very young kids. Oh, it's a mixture of everything, but I think, yeah, people are trying to promote themselves, especially these people who have, um, who make editing software or they're filmmakers, you know, they try to, show their skills and uh, make these viral videos, these UFO videos go viral, make it look so real. Why not? And then when it goes viral, their name gets out there. Now they've got all this new business. It makes sense. It's a bit like, um, in fact, we were just talking about it just before we started filming this. Um, the, the video, the, of the, um, the object that goes over the mountains, I forgot, is it the Utah? Was it the Utah? Yeah. Utah? Yep. I mean, I mean, we, we both came to the conclusion that we think that's faked. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. Isn't it? Isn't it a fake anyway? Didn't it get proven it was a fake officially? There's, yeah, there's lots of people saying that it is a fake, but there's, I don't know if there's any way of officially proving it because it unless um, someone can get hold of the, the original. The, yeah, and well, apparently they have the original and it's in the image, but it's, I think it's definitely, it's, I mean, it's like the, um, the video that you was on your latest uh, goof on stream when we were talking about the, uh, the ball that goes past the airplane. Right, from the pilot. Yeah. And um, that's already people are trying to debunk that now. But we, we came to the conclusion. Well, you came to the conclusion that it is it's CGI. I do. I believe it is. It's just like the Utah one. It, it appears at a thin air and the timing doesn't make sense on it. Um, it would have had to have been it would have been so far away from the time this guy. Uh, now, we don't know. How, how he turned on his camera. Was his camera off and then he turned it on because of what he saw? We don't know that. See, these are the details we need. Um, did he have the camera on and only took three seconds to focus in on it? We don't know that because that can mean the difference between 30 seconds and five seconds from when he saw it 
and started taping it. And what I, why I'm bringing that up, because the object was passing by them so fast that if it, t- if it did take them 30 seconds to see it, analyze it, turn on the camera and then focus in on it, that would have taken about 30 seconds. It flies by, it does. So that object would have, it would have been so far away. He, there's no way he would have been able to see it. So this video, there's a lot of problems with it. And if there's that many problems with it, it's most likely a fake. And he zooms in. Also, he's assuming where the object's going to go, which means they've already set this up beforehand. Like they go, okay, I'm going to focus here. But they just couldn't get the UFO to get centered the whole time. You know what I mean? They were just missing the mark in editing. And they probably just said, ah, forget it. Just leave it. It's close enough. Well, nobody focuses that way on an object. You don't try to predict where it's going. You try to center it so you could watch it. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, UFO of interest did um, a, an, a video, which I think you mentioned that in uh, the last stream, where he says it's uh, balloons. Right. Yeah, the b- mylar balloons. Weather balloons, yeah. Well, I think this was around 20,000 feet. Mylar balloons don't go past usually around 3,500 feet, just regular balloons. So you'd have to have a really huge balloon to get that altitude all the way up. That's why those weather balloons are huge. Ridiculous. Two stories. So so while we're on balloons, what percentage of UFO sightings would you say, in your opinion, are balloons? And, and what? I don't know. And what? And what percent is the real deal? Because I would say 1%. Right. And then I would take that and one-up you and say it's 0.001%. I don't think there's that many real UFOs. Like, okay, let's back this up for a second. When we're talking UFOs, we we mean aliens driving them. We don't just mean an unidentified object. I mean, because an unidentified object could mean an airplane or whatever at a distance. Do you want to know my statistical thinking on the aliens? Yes. In the UFOs? Okay. What was the question? <laughs> what um, percentage are real UFOs and yeah, what I mean, percentage forget, are balloons? Well, forget balloons. For just let's, let's say just unidentified unidentified but possibly when you get up there you know exactly what it is what i what percentage because we wouldn't do have the channels that we have if we didn't believe in something so what percentage do you think is the little green men i'm gonna be honest as always and say probably one thousandth of a percent so one one thousandth of a percent are real aliens flying the ufos People are saying that our skies are filled with these craft. So you, you, do you think the if there is a visitation, it is kept minimal? When I say, I, when, what I mean by that is, do you think that maybe there is a craft that will come to Earth every few months, but they, they're just not all over Earth? Right. You're not going to know about it. You're not going to know they're even there. They don't need to get close. I would assume, okay, I don't like making assumptions about what UFOs are doing because I hate it when people say, oh, now the UFO is searching for something. How do you know? You're not in the mind of the pilot, you schmoho. You don't know. It looks like it because that's what humans might do. But you don't know. Um Oh, man, I went off on a stupid tangent on that, and I forgot what I was going to say. Well, no, this is, what this is what we're doing. This is the whole point of doing these shows, you know. We, we can go on a tangent. You know, it's a crazy subject. Who cares if we go left or right? Look, I want people to know something about me. Uh, I may joke around a lot here and there, but that's just how I cope with things that make me very angry, things that shouldn't be allowed to or even viewed on the internet. I know I, I'm saying something silly right there because that's how I would like it. Um, but 
<clears throat> people are posting it, and I don't know why people believe the fake stuff more than the real stuff. It just, it's so annoying to me. And they know it. And they know that object is def like this uh, one guy, you know, out of uh, Vegas. <laughs> There's nowhere else, no way else to put it. He's videotaping airplanes and helicopters. But people are praising him as if he just walked on water. And I'm like, you don't, you can't tell what this guy's doing. Did you even do a little research? No, people don't care. The general public don't care. They just want to be entertained. But for me and you and people who are in it, we care. And we're only less than 1%. Not a lot of us out there. That's why when you and I talk about, like, uh, are we in the thick of this? I mean, are we? is this all ufology is? Is TTSA, uh, you know, Tom DeLong, Lou Elizondo, and then a few other people around, you know, Bob Lazar, uh, Jaime Mosan, of course. You know, there's a few people, but it's not a lot of us. And, and and we should all be in this for the same thing. How can they and MUFON accept fake stuff and call it 100% real and give it an award? Who's doing that vetting? Who's, whose research is this? It's awful. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I'm just angry about the whole damn thing. I, I did. I have to say something that I did notice something, uh, especially towards the end of 2000, towards the second half of 2019, is that it started to become a little bit more um, factual. There was more evidence. There was more people that were trying to do people were some people trying to debunk their own stuff. There wasn't as much. The, I don't think there's as much. Maybe it's YouTube that's stopping that with the new, way the new algorithm is. And I say YouTube because let's face it, most of the stuff that ever goes out is going to be on YouTube. Yeah. Because that's the platform that they use. It's the main platform. But I think what's happened with YouTube, which is spoiling it for a lot of uh, creators like yourself and, and, and me, um, that they are kind of like pulling back on the the bullshit they're not letting it go out you couldn't i don't think you could do a fake ufo video now and get the sort of views you would have got five years ago no because they put a, a blanket over all the conspiracy channels that's why and and if you do go on someone's ufo channel or um, like for instance the moon like if you type in um moon landing hoax they will give you a Wikipedia Britannica of the actual moon landing and telling you here's the history of NASA and the moon landing, you know? Yeah. So they're shoving it down our throats in the direction, maybe in the direction of truth. Like you said, it's making it harder. They're making it harder to see the BS. Well, they're making it hard to see all of it. So yeah. The, yeah. I personally think at some point we will have to find a new platform if it carries on the way it's going. Um, but it, the the crap has been filtered out. The crap is being filtered out. Is it? From what you... Searchable crap, yeah. I, I seem it, to find plenty of it. Because we're subscribed to it. <laughs> See, yeah, that's true. Huh. Well... Yeah. I'll have to try it uh, with the browser I'm not subscribed on then. Yeah, I, I think the, whatever they're doing there, and, you know, I'm, I don't like the way it's work, the way what it's done to the community, but it is streaming out a lot of the nonsense. I don't think people are bothering to make it anymore because of this, oh, because they really? know it doesn't work. I don't know, man. I, you know, yeah, I guess you're right in a way. See, that's that's how good of a job they've done. I, I, I'm in the field and I'm questioning where are the videos that, I, yeah, you used to see them all the time, all the crappy ones. Yeah, I mean, look at Section 51 for a start. If you remember his channel that does all the CGI stuff, he he actually came out of the woodwork. He, he, he filmed himself for the first time and said, 
every video that I've ever done has been made by me. It's CGI that I've done. And he, he, he then said, I've gone and renamed every single video CGI. I remember that, I think. Wasn't that yeah. like two years ago? When was that? It was about a year ago, I think. You know, the French guy. Yeah, it rings a bell, but I, I don't know why I can't recall specifics on it. Anyway. I think the point that I'm making there is that let's start doing some real research. You know, the, the platform's there, but I don't think if something did get released now, if, say if somebody filmed an amazing piece of UFO footage and they put it up on YouTube, it probably wouldn't go anywhere. No. Unless it looked, like you just said, if it looked really good, then a huge website or platform would take it and make Share it go it. viral. Yeah. But that also makes me very upset because I know I've posted some incredible stuff of my own and never went viral. I had one video that went viral and didn't hit a million, but it made it to 300,000 was the humanoid video because it does look unbelievable. But it's hard now. It's hard to get anything to go viral in this in this genre. I, I, I personally think that... And it, it's hard to say this because as much as I want my channel to grow, I want your channel to go, I want other creators that believe in this subject, I want their channel to go, to, to grow... Um, in some ways, it's may, maybe for you for ufology, it's a good thing. But at the same time, then you have comp you, you the only people you can trust in, and it's probably the wrong people to trust in are the, are the big companies that say sponsor us. You know, we've got the answers. We're going to release the best piece of UFO footage you've ever seen in your life. And then you've got, I mean, now the biggest UFO channel in the world, Third Phase of the Moon, because, you know, Secure Team's not made a video for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we was talking about the the uh, the documentary. They just they did a great job on the new documentary that's coming out from, um, what's his name now? James Fox. Yeah, the Phenomena. I can't say Phenomena. It. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because I can't say it. <laughs> Um, it looks fantastic. It looks absolutely fantastic, and I cannot. It's out in se September. Um, but that's what we're going to have to go on now. Is is things like this? Because anybody that puts a video out on YouTube, I see something out in the sky. I put it out on my channel. You're probably going to talk about 600 views, unless one of the bigger channels shares it out. Right. And 600, it is a lot, but it really isn't. No, this is what I'm saying. When you go back to saying that um, disclosure will never come, and you, for disclosure, you need people to kind of like, the only way disclosure will come is on a, a news platform. And I will never trust that. If, some, if, if the government said overnight, UFOs that are real, they are extraterrestrial, they are landing on the planet, and they've been here for years, and they show you some remote footage from a village you've never heard of, of that be, people being amazed because they've seen all this. That's probably how it'll happen. Well, I tell you how they should do it. Um, well, and I talked that they should do the false flag. <laughs> no, if if they if they wanted to usher in disclosure, I think the best way to do it is to educate the public first, and then gradually um, introduce these aliens. Like, here's what I mean: if you had an announcement, let's say Super Bowl Sunday, um, the the answer to the question you see it in bold type has been answered, aliens exist coming January 15th to NBC. We'll just give an example. 
actually, if they wanted to do it the right way, they should do it. Yeah, I'm thinking American channels, but, you know, it'll be on the BBC or whatever. I think they should do it universally at the same exact time. There would be a TV show that introduces how we found the aliens, maybe got a signal or maybe they just showed up and what we've learned from them and integrate it for about a month or two. Right. And make it a series and let people know at the beginning of every show, this is not fake. This is real. The government is bringing the attention to aliens to the general public because there will be, you know, us and them from now on. And they do it every week. And then they have the season finale where they walk out the, uh, the head alien or something. I don't know. But halfway through after teaching us about these new aliens, where they came from, their technology, what we expect to do with this technology and what they expect to get from us, then they introduce us to the leaders of that you know, species. That's how I think disclosure should happen. Now, it could backfire and people may think that it's a TV show, you know, and it's not, and it's not a real thing, but they're telling us it is. Well, they would have to figure out a way to prove it. And of course, that would be the news outlets. The news outlets, reporters, they're the ones that are going to say, we've looked into it. This is a real thing. Aliens are here. And then you know what would happen as soon as people started believing it? Crime. Crime will go up. People will start doing things, thinking that the end is near or there's no consequences anymore or whatever. Whatever. 